Good morning. Good morning. I'm uh, Chad Henze, one of our deacons, our other deacon for the day, Jamie Scotto in the back. Uh, if you have any questions or, or need anything, see one of us. Uh, special welcome to any guests we have with us this morning. Welcome to those who are watching us on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, if you have any announcements to share, uh, please come forward and, and join me at this time. We welcome again our guest minister, Marilyn Sponzo. Many of us know Marilyn. She's been a member of First Church for, for 20 years, and I, my understanding is this was kind of a sudden step in, Marilyn, so thank you for, for stepping in this morning. Um, collection plates are located at the back of the church, uh, or you can check your bulletin for online giving opportunities. Um, I'll let you folks make announcements so that I don't double any of yours. How's that? Good morning. I'm Charlie Kuchenbrod. It takes many gifts to make our congregation work, and some people have gifts for financial management and budgeting. And those people are anxious to use their gifts, but in order to do so, they need to receive people's pledges so that we know how much will be on the top line of our budget. So if you have not yet returned your pledge, please do so. You can mail it to either church office or bring it to church here and drop it in the offering plate at the back. Thank you very much. Good morning, I'm Gail Pillow. And I don't have exact numbers, but I'm happy to tell you that we have met and exceeded our goal for Thanksgiving baskets. So thank you all so very much. Good morning, I'm Lisa Reinhart, and I want to thank you for filling out the talent and time survey. We've had 54 responses, which has been beautiful. But if you have not done yours, you have until Wednesday. I really want to know what you're interested in. Paula Johnson and I are putting together these talent lists for the future of our church. Uh, but more immediately, we are planning our nominations for next year for boards and committees. And on December 11th, we will vote in as a dual congregation or a joint con congregation uh, those people to serve us officially in those ways. But we have openings for one day a year, one hour a year, or an ongoing project. So please fill out that survey and thank you again for those who have done that. Hi, I'm Sarah Perdon. I am the Faith Formation Director. Um, just a shout out to all my middle school and high schoolers. Uh, we have two things planned this week. Friday at First Church, my middle school and high schoolers can meet and we're going to be making care packages for people who are homeless and also just hanging out and playing some games. Um, and then high schoolers are going to be um, going to Manchester to ABC Burger, I think it is. Um, Artisanal burger, artisanal burger. Um, so that's Sunday at 6:30. We're meeting here, we're driving here, and we're going to have like these huge, yummy dessert milkshakes. So um, all the high schoolers that want to come and get stomach aches later, let me know. If, if you need a driver for the milkshakes, Sarah, I'm, I'm free. <laughs> Um, on the milkshake front, unfortunately, there's no coffee hour this morning. Uh, a couple other announcements to cover. The flowers this morning were given by Betty Hart in honor of veterans past and present. present. If you'd like to provide flowers for one of our upcoming services, you can see Kathy Morgan for November or Lee French for December. Lee, Just you, Lee? For December. For December. Okay, great. Uh, we're looking for photographers. If you have uh, website photos that you think might, uh, might make a uh, nice image on our website, please see your, your email for information on how to submit those. Um, one announcement I've noticed in our, our weekly emails that's been there for quite some time is that we're looking for someone to drive, a volunteer to drive someone, I believe from Simsbury to church on a regular basis. Uh, if anyone's available to do that, again, see, see your, your weekly email. Um, one more announcement, I want to make a plug for the, the Good Company Theater play next door coming up this afternoon at 2. Is that right, Steve? 
two o'clock, all right? Steve, I'm glad that Trevor found his Duran Duran tape. If you wanna know what the heck I'm talking about, two o'clock next door. Hilarious, come laugh for an hour, well worth your time. Uh, please check your bulletin for more details and further announcements. We are an open and affirming church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let our worship continue. Good morning, everybody. Please join me in the call to worship. Holy one, out of a formless void, you created a universe teeming with life, flora, fauna, even the earth itself. Into all of them, you breathed your spirit and you saw that it was good. And out of the earth, you created humankind in your image and according to your likeness. And you saw that it was good. And you gave humankind dominion over the earth so that all your creation could thrive and grow in your spirit. And you saw that it was very, very good. Now please join me in our gathering prayer. Holy one, you have entrusted your gift of creation to us to protect and nurture in your name. But in our greed and thoughtlessness, we have used and abused not only the earth, but each other. We pray that you will forgive us, enlighten us, and bless us with the courage to embrace a new way of being, so that your creation may be restored and once again bloom in your love.
Norman, I always love the intros that you do for me. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to invite all young people forward or anyone young at heart. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So this year, we purchased a new curriculum. And we do it with you guys over in Sunday school. It's a really great curriculum. It's kind of Montessori-based. I think you guys like it. You, it's, it relies a lot on curiosity and spirit and nature. Do you guys remember a few Sundays ago, we were outside. We actually built fairy houses. That was one of our things. I see some nods. We built fairy houses. We spent the entire Sunday school class admiring spirit and nature. The affirmation, every lesson comes with an affirmation. The affirmation that Sunday was, all of nature holds the beauty and presence of spirit. I really liked that. All of nature holds the beauty and presence of spirit. And we noticed the divine all around us in sticks and leaves and stones. And it was such a fun lesson that we actually continued it the next Sunday. We all gathered items. Remember we put our nature items in a bag and we collected things, right? Pine cones and leaves. And we're going to eventually make a little altar with all this stuff. Do you guys remember though the two things that were also collected kind of by accident in those bags? What's, what were the two things? Go ahead. Ants. Ants. <laughs> yeah. We collected two ants by accident. So when we went into the classroom, we put all this stuff on the table, we had two ants with us. And there was so many giggles, so many smiles. It was, I see you laughing over there. You remember the ants, right? It was so wonderful. We spent 20 minutes playing with these ants, protecting these ants, sheltering these ants, making little houses for the ants. I think we even had names for the ants. Yeah, we did. What, what were the names? I forget. I think Frodo was one of them, right? I think one of the, maybe one of them was like Kevin or something. <laughs> Our lesson focused on paying attention to every little piece of nature and the divine, including the ants. Parents and grown-ups, you probably, if you had kids in class, you probably heard about those ants when you drove your kids home. Kathy Pigeon and I witnessed these kids playing with these ants and the wonder and the excitement that came along with it. There's a saying, and you probably have heard it, that it takes a village to raise a child. We always talk about how we are a church family. We are all connected. We're all part of this greater church community. Well, our faith formation program also requires a village. A village of volunteers, a village of helpers, a village of supporters. From the littlest kids in the playground, which they will eventually use, to the high school group, it takes a village to inspire, to love and to support these kids. So I'm gonna ask all the grown-ups, please consider volunteering to sit on our Faith Formation Committee, to maybe help and brainstorm and implement some activities, things to support these kids in our program. Consider volunteering in Sunday School with me one Sunday so you can be part of the fun and the laughter, and all those moments when you can truly see friendships being made and spirit facilitating events, making connections, because it truly takes a village. We are all individuals, and we come here in the presence of God in this worship space as a community. What better way to see God to witness spirit than with the youth? Side note, if you volunteer with the youth group, there's a high likelihood of having pizza or ice cream. <laughs> so if you're moved, I'd appreciate any and all help 
in all capacities. So you can find me after worship or email me, and we can talk. You guys follow me in an echo prayer? Mother God, Mother God. thanks for our church family. Thanks for the grown-ups. Thanks for the kids. Thanks for the time that we spend together. Amen. morning again. As we hear the words of scripture, let us listen in the words of the word of God. Today's reading is Isaiah chapter 65 verses 17 through 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their children with them. Before they call, I will answer, while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. Good morning. It's wonderful to be with you again. Are you familiar with the bumper sticker, in case of rapture, this car will be empty? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> or my favorite, actually, is in case of rapture, this driver will be very disappointed. <laughs> and we laugh, but, you know, what is that about? Poof, we're going to be taken away at the end of days if we follow the rules. It, it's not just silliness. This is a very familiar trope for us. It's one that's rooted in scripture. You think about Jesus ascending into heaven. And it's also rooted in the, the cosmology of the early world. It's a theme that's reflected in art. Think of the Renaissance painters in music. And it's even embraced in popular culture. Um, there's a new Disney, well, two years old, Disney movie called Soul in which a musician, you've You've heard of it? A musician um, has an unfortunate event and he has to tweak his soul so he goes up to heaven. Literally, he goes up an escalator, right? So Proverbs sums up this perspective um, most succinctly, I think. The path of life leads upward for the prudent to keep them from going down to the realm of the dead. I call this directional theology. You either go up or you go down, or if you're Catholic, you may go sideways to purgatory for a while. <laughs> but all of these images, whether captured in exquisite art or in silly bumper stickers, have one thing in common. 
salvation, and by that, I mean salvation with a small s, you know. Whatever happens at the end of our lives, you can call it the rapture, the end of days, eternal life, whatever. Salvation means leaving the earth behind, escaping, going to a new and different place. Why? Why? Practically speaking, we know why, because we're trashing this planet. And so there are discussions, and some of them are scientific, some of them are whimsical, about developing the capability for humankind to travel to and to live in different places, different planets. But theologically, this kind of thinking doesn't make sense. Think about Genesis and the exquisite description, the poetry of God creating Earth. And this, this musical theme that goes through it, after every day of creation, God saw that it was good. God saw that it was very good. Why would God allow part of creation, the part created in God's image and likeness, which is us, why would God allow us to destroy the rest of creation and then just move on? Well, Isaiah has the answer here. God doesn't want us to leave this world behind. God wants us to build on the original creation, to transform our way of being in this world, and in so doing, to transform the world itself. So let's hear that again. God is calling us to transform our way of being in this world. Easy, right? I can go home now, right? I have a lot of trouble with very esoteric words like transformation and being and what is the world. So, so let's tackle this, this short little sentence one at a time. And let's start with the easiest part, this world. We're not talking about a parallel universe. We're not talking about Matt Damon in The Martian planting potatoes on Mars. We are talking about the same creation that is so lovingly described in Genesis. And look at the concrete images that Isaiah uses. There are houses to live in, vineyards to plant, fruit to eat. There are infants and old people, wolves, lambs, serpents, and humans all living together peacefully. And Isaiah is saying this is, or rather this can be, our home. Okay, transforming our way of being. Being, this is not a dream of the future. It's a dream that's becoming reality in the here and now. Look at the words again in Isaiah. God says, I am about to create. I am creating. God does not say, in the future, if you folks behave, I may create. It's literally about the here and now. And it's about our way of being in the world. We are co-creators with God of this new reality. And again, look at the language. God says, I create, I am creating. But then he says, they will build houses, they will plant vineyards, they will eat the fruit and give birth. Basically, what Isaiah is saying here is that God breathed life, it's called nefresh in he Hebrew. God breathed life into humankind and God is asking us to breathe renewed life into creation. Now we come to the tough part and the tough word, transformation. What, what does that mean? Are we changeling somehow? Do we need to morph into something better than the humankind that God created? Not at all. By describing how the new world will function, Isaiah is implicitly telling us what needs to be transformed the situations that need to be cured. Infant mortality, premature death, homelessness, starvation, greed, corruption, political hostility, isolationism, both moral and political. 
In short, God is asking us to return to what and whom God created us to be, human beings who do justice, love mercy, and walk in compassion and love. All right, nice answer. But what does it mean? Are we supposed to literally follow the first disciples, leave our nets and our life behind, and go down some new ascetic path? Again, the answer is not at all. Um, Howard Thurman, who was a civil rights leader and a theologian, said it very, very beautifully. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs are people who have come alive. So ask yourself, what path makes you come alive? One might be participation in a broad movement for justice, um, marches, protests, letter writing campaigns. This work can be very powerful, very visible, and very demanding. And we are not all cut out to do it, physically, emotionally, or in other ways. So there are other paths. One might be more intimate, participating in church and community initiatives, to feed the hungry, to help the homeless, to end racism, racial reconciliation committee, and to address other systemic forms of oppression. Again, the work also invests, requires an investment of time and effort, and it can also be very powerful. But there's another path, one that is much more subtle and easily overlooked by those used to doing things in a grander way. And I must say, I think it's overlooked by our beloved UCC, which tends to focus on these large initiatives. But this other path asks us to quietly model a new way of relationship with family, with friends, with community, and with strangers in a way that puts kindness, compassion, and love at the heart of any encounter. It doesn't require time, money, or actually much effort, but it does require us to leave our nets behind. Nets filled with ego, self-importance, material concerns, and it requires us to focus on the needs of others. No matter what path we choose, this is work that we, humankind, us, we need to do it. This is not the rapture. We are not going to be whisked away by the unseen hand of God to a new place with no effort on our parts at all. It's really, it's the old sign in, in the little antique shop, you broke it, you fix it. Right? God gave us dominion over creation, and now we have, have to fix the damage that we have done. In closing, I, I want to share a story with you. Um, many of you know my sister Anne and my niece Lizzie. Lizzie is legally blind and she is a force of nature. On Lizzie's first day of school, which was 15 years ago, um, I went down, I was with her mother when she got on the school bus. I was there to take some pictures. And here's this little tot, you know, with the pigtails, climbing on this big school bus. And my sister had tears in her eyes. And she said, I cannot prevent Lizzie from getting hurt or from doing dumb things. But I can give her a hug when she comes home in tears. I can give her advice when she doesn't know what to do. And I can <laughs> always, always remind her of how much I love her. Well, friends, I tend to, I mean, the Bible talks about God as our father, our parent. I tend to see God as my mother. God will hold us up when we stumble. God has already given us advice. It's called scripture, and it's called Jesus. And God reminds us daily, constantly, that we are beloved children of God. And if we believe that, if we really believe that, then we can realize the dream of justice, mercy, and love in the here and now. 
and may it be so. Amen. We now come to that part of our service where we offer our prayers to the people of the world. I have some prayer cards here, but before I read them, anybody else want to stand up and offer some prayers? Gail. I don't know if you all heard that. Gail asked prayers for her sisters, Sally and Lynette, who both have serious health issues. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for prayers for mom who got through it fine. Good. Becky Seelman asks for prayers of healing for her parents, Anne and Peter. Beth asks prayers for her friend Janet who is struggling with depression, which is a, a terrible, insidious, and often unnoticed uh, illness. There is a shout out to Peg Giles live streaming from the Cape. 
Hello, Peg, from all of us. Your church family here is praying for you together. And there is a happy face to accompany that. But yes, Peg, we, we know you're having health issues and we offer you positive energy prayers in our love. We are thankful that Lori is here with us today and surprised that it happened so quickly. And Lori, in response, offers prayers of thanks and gratitude for this church family. So much grace, she says, has come unto me and I send it right back at you. Many blessings to all. Thank you, Lori. We are delighted to have you with us today. I would also like to offer a prayer of thanks for our veterans, men and women who put themselves in harm's way to protect us and to live out a commitment to justice and to democracy. Their courage and their fortitude are what has made it possible to live and enjoy the freedoms that we have. Now, if you will join me in prayer. Gracious one, those living in the United States are in the exhausted wake of post-election frenzy, rejoicing at winds deflated by losses and continuing to cling to the polarities that keep us a people divided. Human rights offenses and resulting violence continue in Iran and Myanmar and China. The war goes on in Ukraine. Floods and drought in West Africa and Pakistan have left millions facing famine. Anti-Semitic sentiment is again raising its ugly voice and across the globe, natural disasters, partisan violence, and systemic oppression are destroying your creation. Merciful one, life here on earth is heartbreaking and volatile. Remind us to take notice of the beauty that surrounds us, even as we work to heal and hold fast to your promise, to be with us, to renew us, and to reconcile what is with the hope of what can be. We pray in the name of the one who is with us as we live in a reality transformed by love. Amen. And if you will join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
please join me in the benediction. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing through the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.